Hello, everyone, and welcome to week three of Joyful Journeys. This week, I am joined by someone who I'm lucky to call my friend, a former classmate, and most importantly, known as my inspirational role model, Ashley Aviles. Welcome, Ashley. Hey, Sammy. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm so excited, and that's amazing to hear. <laughs> you are also my inspiration. <laughs> You're great. You are too sweet. Well, Ashley and I met in college and have since been reconnected through her newly established business, Empowered with Ash. So Ashley, tell us a little bit about your work empowering women to feel their best. Yes. So I started my business a little over a year ago. And what drove me to want to start Empowered with Ash was I have always had a passion for empowering women through wellness, through fitness. And over the years, I noticed a gap working in person in the fitness industry and with my own health and fitness journey as well, where there's a lot of emphasis on the movement piece. But over the years, I realized there's so much more to our health than just the movement, right? It is not just about the fitness. And a lot of times in person, I'd be helping someone for maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, and it'd be once or twice a week. So I had no idea what these women were doing the other 24, five or 24, six of their week. And I felt like I wanted to make a deeper impact in their life. Like obviously the movement piece really made a positive influence in their physical health. But I was like, what about all the other aspects? of health like what about nutrition what about you know their sleep you know what about their hormones all these things and on my own health and fitness journey I kind of went to extremes honestly like <laughs> I went to extremes throughout the years and navigating that I realized how much I was wreaking havoc on my body by just focusing on the movement piece and kind of just falling into like the chronic dieting traps and under eating, under fueling, which is what a lot of women do fall under without even trying, without even realizing, right? And so the combination of my own experiences and how I kind of came to a crossroads where I had to start making some changes and start prioritizing holistic health um, to really just not only feel my best, but to also just be my healthiest going forward. Um, and I found a lot of empowerment through that myself. Um, and so I was like, how do I help women find the same empowerment? How do I help them find the same confidence that I've found? Um, but I also, you know, from working a person, Saul, I don't know if I can give this full, you know, depth and experience I want to give to them from, you know, just doing in-person personal training. In-person personal training is amazing, no shade, but this was my, <laughs> this was like where my mind went. So I became really passionate about holistic health. And that's when I decided to create Empowered with Ash, which is an online health and fitness coaching business. So we prioritize every area of wellness in my business to really ensure women are not only seeing and feeling better results, but they are like living up to their fullest potential in life. Like they are enjoying the process. They're not going to extremes and they're not putting themselves on the back burner either. They're like finding that sweet spot balance where they can love, you know, all areas of life and um, just feel really like they can do it all. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of times we fall into that all or nothing mindset. And a lot of women I work with, that is kind of the case with them. Um, we're either on the nothing side or the all side. And I've been in both of those places as I went through, you know, my healing journey. So that is kind of how Empowered with Ash came to be and what drove that passion behind it, getting into that holistic space and just being able to, yeah, again, help women on that deeper level and ensure that they are taken care of also their mental health, right? Um, their emotional health, their nutritional health, and it's not just the movement piece. That is so amazing. And it's so <laughs> important just to realize how connected all those things are and that you really do have to focus on every piece of it. You can't just mm -hmm. take out one and say, oh, I'll fix this and it'll fix all my problems. Like you really have to take it all into consideration and fix it all together at the same time, work on all the pieces together. It's like 
we can't just put band-aids on the issues. We need to actually get to the root of the issues and solve them. And that's a lot of what my program focuses on. Um, and I realized that's when I started just be feeling like the best version of myself when I did that, because band-aids are going to fall off. <laughs> and we kind of live in a society that's all about pasting on a band-aid, but it's like, you can't put a band-aid on a bullet wound and years of doing things to our bodies that don't serve us. Um, is not going to be fixed with a band-aid. So I'm all about sustainability and long-term solutions, not about the quick fix life over here, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that. Well, what are three, what would you say, the three most important tips, tricks, or mindfulness thoughts to have when it comes to embracing body positivity? Yes. I love this question so much because I feel like it took me a really long time to get a, into a place of feeling really body positive. Um, and that is something I'm so passionate about helping other women do. And thinking about this question, like the very first thing I'll say, or the very first one is going to be getting to a place of body neutrality first, because I think in order to become body positive, you first have to accept your body in all like states, that's essentially what body neutrality is. It's like accepting your body for all it does for you. And I think gratitude is bred from that. So if you don't have gratitude for your body and if you also don't get to a place of neutrality and realizing there's so much more to you than just your body, if you're actively hyper fixating on your body, obsessing over it or finding your identity in it, which is what I did for so many years, you're not going to be happy. Like to put it bluntly, you just aren't. You have to first get to a place of body neutrality, realizing there's so much more to you than that one aspect of you. We just talk about the holistic wellness, right? So that's the first thing is I think people don't talk about body neutrality enough. Um, and that's something, honestly, I want to start promoting more as well, because for me, that was very instrumental in healing my body image with myself. Um, and I'll always share how, you know, we, any stage of life, no matter what our body looks like, if we can't foster that relationship with our body to have that neutrality and have that acceptance and have that gratitude, we are going to struggle to find that body positivity. Like it just, they, they can't, you know, ha you can't do one without the other. <laughs> so that's my first thing. Um, and then I think how you take care of yourself directly correlates with how you feel about yourself so again if we're being obsessive and hyper fixating we're going to extremes doing extreme diets we're so focused on this physical outcome it's going to be really hard to be body positive because we're always reaching for something that we don't quote unquote think we have and then if we're putting our health in the back burner well that really breeds insecurity because if we're not taking care of our mental physical emotional health any of these things we're not taking care of our nutrition, whether we're under eating or we're just like overindulging all the time, we are going to feel uncomfortable because we're not fueling our body the way it was meant to be fueled, or maybe not moving our body the way it's meant to be moved, whether that's doing too much or, like, you know, nothing at all. Again, it comes down to those two extremes that I find with clients, it's one or the other, you're usually not in the middle, because society has really bred this like, all or nothing mentality, like I said, on fitness and wellness, but it doesn't have to be that, that way. So I think realizing that how we care for ourselves, and if we are holistically caring for ourselves, that's going to directly correlate to us actually being more body positive, um, because we found that balance. And I think if our if we are in one of those all or nothing spaces, our hormones can be out of whack, like just the way that we feel about ourselves is not going to be confident. So I think the other thing is, just thinking that second thing, right? How you take care of yourself matters and can be a direct correlation and how you feel about your body for sure. Um, and then the third one is going to be challenging your inner narratives and creating positive ones about your body. So what I find with women, and this was the case with myself too, is a lot of women have body image issues rooted back to their childhood or their past experiences. And they have written narratives about themselves over the years. Like they have made this narrative truth. So if we don't feel comfortable in our body or we feel our body's undesirable, right? We feel really insecure. We're going to write as our truth that like, you know, our body 
you know, it's disgusting or it's this or that. It doesn't make it true, but we have created this narrative that it is. And every time we feed into that, we're just reinforcing it's true. It's true. And so it's a mix of our experiences, the things people say to us growing up, right? The way people either talk about themselves growing up, the way society kind of maybe praises a certain body type. And so as an adult, you have to, you have to challenge those narratives and you have to realize just because you're thinking it doesn't make it true. And you have to start rewriting those narratives. Like you will not be able to love your body, become body positive if you don't do that mental work of rewriting that narrative. Like if we're always obsessing, hyperfixating, if we're always, you know, talking down to ourselves, nothing's going to change. And so I think how you talk to yourself matters too, but also realizing with the damage done from childhood and past experiences, which, you know, maybe some women don't have that, but I, you know, every woman I've worked with has, you know, I've had it. I don't, I don't, I would be really impressed and honestly good for that person if somebody doesn't have that damage. But I mean, I think even being a nineties baby, right, Sammy, we grew up in this, but generations before us too had it even worse. Honestly, like I've worked with women of so many different ages and it's just so interesting to see how the same theme is that a lot of what society pushed throughout childhood or experiences they had with things parents said to them or the way parents treated their own body, all of this carried all the way into adulthood. And so you have to do that hard work and it isn't easy at first. It kind of sucks and it's hard and you know anything that's new is hard at first, but you can rewire it. You can rewire it. And I think when you're also taking care of yourself and practicing that body neutrality, it goes hand in hand with challenging those narratives because all those three things, if you're doing all those three things, girl, you can fly. Like that is literally, um, you can really learn to just like love your body for all it is and start thinking more positively about it. So those are my three things I would say are most important. I love those. And especially that last one, that just really hits home with Girls on the Run because that is very similar to one of the lessons that our girls focus on, which is talking about positive self-talk and negative Mm self-talk. And one of their lessons challenges them that whenever they hear themselves saying something negative about themselves, or if they hear a teammate saying something negative about themselves, that they come up with this sound that they are supposed to make. And that is supposed to trigger in their heads that, hey, I'm not, I'm saying something not nice about myself. I shouldn't be saying this. Let me flip it around and turn it into something positive about myself. So I really love that. I think it really is important that we give ourselves the love that we deserve and that we are talking positively to ourselves because if you say one negative thing, your mind will probably start to believe it, even though it is not necessarily true. It's like we have to undo the damage, unfortunately. And so that's why I love Girls on the Run so much. And like, honestly, like even being able to talk, like it kind of makes me emotional. It makes me want to cry because I'm like, even when you invited me to talk here, I'm like, that is what I wish I had as a kid. Like, I'm literally going to cry thinking about this, but that is what I wish I had as a kid is like, we need to be starting at that young age of doing that work so that there isn't years of this like damage to undo. I'm literally getting like choked up here. So I'm going to stop. But to me, that's like so powerful. And that that's really like starting at that young age matters. So I love that so much that, and that's why I love Girls on the Run and all that it stands for. Yes, I love it. We've kind of already mentioned this throughout as you've been talking, um, but how do you continue to, so to say, practice what you preach with all of the parts that you incorporate in your program? Yeah, so I'd say I definitely make sure I'm prioritizing all areas of wellness like we spoke about. So or like we spoke about. So not just my physical health, but you know, how am I feeling and what I'm doing on a day-to-day basis? Is that supporting me to feel my best and feel my most confident and comfortable in my body? Um, And so always kind of checking in on that and whatever areas are lacking, like reminding myself that, okay, I can't just do the fitness nutrition like I need to prioritize the mental and if um, the nutrition's like lacking a little bit okay I I need to push with the nutrition so I think always just like 
reminding myself to keep that balance is one thing. Um, but also I think practicing a lot of that body neutrality. I know we talked about that, but that's like a huge one. I think when you're in that place, most of the time, it helps breed that body confidence and that body positivity. So a lot of the times I'm not even thinking like I used to, when I was in my obsessive phase, um, I used to like body check all the time and be just like so hyper fixated. And I think when you get away from that, like it is so freeing, like you, like you're just always in that mentality of I'm so grateful for what my body does for me. And I, I try to think of that too, is, um, and what I stress to clients is like having those deep whys behind what you're doing. So remembering that it isn't, it isn't, you're not doing this because you want to look better at the end of the day, right? You're doing this because because of how you want to feel in your body, how you want to feel about yourself. Um, and when we take those actions, we start to feel that way and we start to feel empowered. So I think always finding that balance. I think too, like little things, like always wearing clothes that make me feel comfortable and confident. When I, you know, a lot of times I see women compare themselves to past versions of themselves, especially if, you know, they may be in their 20s, you know, maybe they're in their 30s or 40s now. And in their 20s, they're like, I just wish I looked like that. And it's like, we really can't fall into that comparison game against past versions of ourselves, nor can we compare to others either. I think recognizing, you know, that our body is always evolving and changing. Um, and we are also so you also unique. And like, these are all beautiful things. We can be the best version of ourselves at every age, but I think realizing too that our uniqueness is like something to celebrate. And so I really steer away from comparison. I also grew up with a twin sister, so I have an aversion to comparing myself because she was always um, more petite than me growing up. And so I had a lot of issues with that. So now as an adult, I'm just like, you know, I don't want to voluntarily put myself in that headspace because you know what? Someone else can be beautiful and so can you. You know what I mean? It's not like it has to be. And I think when women get caught in that comparison and they almost romanticize either the past version of themselves or the way someone else is looking, um, it's just dangerous territory. So I think you can't, you have to really focus on your own journey and what you need to do to feel most empowered in your best. And you can't, you got to drown out the noise of focusing on others. I think I always like to say you could use women as other inspiration, but we don't want to get into a cycle of tearing ourselves down um, or someone else down either. Right. We don't want to, we kind of want to break that. Um, but I, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I think too wearing clothes that you feel confident in is huge also um, and not trying to like fit into something that doesn't fit um, because I think like those are just little ways too that we're setting our mind up to feed into a narrative when it's like your body is not the problem if the clothes don't fit. And so I think like reminding yourself that these are all little ways, especially as we get into our 20s, 30s, so on, right, that we have to start thinking about because we've entered new territory in our life. This is like a new era of life, right? And so I think those things and then um, probably lastly, too, just like always thinking about what I'm grateful for. So really celebrating my individuality, going along with not comparing, right? Celebrating that like I'm, there's only one of me on this earth. Like, yes, I have a twin, but <laughs> we're, we're still different, right? There's no copy paste of me on this earth. And like, that's a beautiful thing. And I think I really just wish that that's the narrative society pushed. And that's the narrative that women fed into more often is like, literally I get chills. Like there is no one out there like you on this planet earth, instead of focusing on what you feel you don't have or what you want, why don't you just focus on becoming the best dang version of yourself you can be, you know what I mean? And see how much more fulfilling and amazing and confident you feel. Um, so I think that's huge. Um, and then last thing I promise, cause I know I just said last thing, but I want to note this too. I think remembering too that, the size and shape of your body is not what makes you who you are or what makes you beautiful. It's like a beautiful piece of you, but going back to you, like, again, you have to cultivate that those overall habits um, and happiness within yourself in all areas of life. It's not going to come from being a smaller size or being a different size or looking a certain way. And I think when you start to realize that, realize that that's huge you know what I mean um because you could be 
the smallest version of yourself and be more insecure than a version of yourself that's a different size. And I think we have to remember that too. It's not about what society pushed being smaller, smaller, smaller. It's about feeling strong. It's about feeling confident. And that doesn't always come from what you think it will. I think a lot of times people think once I get to this end result, you know, I'm going to just be so happy. And it's like, if that's your mindset, likely not, you know, you're always going to be chasing something. And so I think remembering that that isn't everything. Um, so I know that maybe that got a little far off from your question, but that's kind of how I practice it is like just summing up, not comparing, right. Prioritizing, taking care of myself, practicing body neutrality, of course, back to the mindset stuff we talked about. Um, yeah. And like just the little things like less body checking clothes that are comfortable. That is all so important, especially just because of like the digital world that we live in and how easy it is to just go online and see all of these false narratives of women and their worth and how it's all tied to how they physically look and that we really, we need to step away from that. We need to stop comparing ourselves to them because everything you said like that that's not what we should be doing. That's not how we're going to lift ourselves up or empower ourselves. So I love that. Well, Ashley, I thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that everyone listening is feeling as empowered as I am right now to just go out and be the best version of ourselves. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. This episode of Joyful Journeys is brought to you by Girls on the Run of Northern Virginia.